Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today, and thank you for joining Beacon Japan. We're very grateful that you could join us today for this digital thought leadership event, and、uh, we hope that you find the event and this session very valuable. This session is called Data Leaders at the Helm. And in this session, we're going to take a look at how technologies and workplace environments are evolving and how these changes are turning data leaders into an emerging force and placing them in a unique position to chart a path forward for their organizations. My name is Pedro Arellano, and I'm head of product marketing for Looker at Google Cloud. Now, those of you familiar with Looker may have noticed that we have a new logo. And、uh, that's because we are now part of Google Cloud. It's a very exciting time for the Looker team. As you know,、uh, Looker's mission statement is to empower people through the smarter, smarter use of data, which、uh, aligns perfectly with Google's mission of、uh, organizing the world's information and making it universally accessible and useful.、Uh, another thing that Looker and Google Cloud、uh, are absolutely committed to is investing in multi cloud. And、that is a common theme that you'll hear this year、uh, from Looker. Now, just a bit of quick context about where the Looker product stands today.、Uh, there are more than 5,000 developers today building on top of the Looker platform.、Uh, we have over 2,000 companies all over the world using Looker, from the largest retailers and banks all the way down to startups of one to two people. And something that will be really central to today's talk and the Looker sessions that、uh, you attend is that half of our customers are using Looker to work with data in a way that goes beyond traditional BI. Now, before I get started, I want to take a moment to state today's goals. First, I hope that you understand that the value of data within an organization is no longer up for debate. Everyone needs data, and everyone's job has the potential to improve with data. Next, there are three trends that we will identify and explore in this presentation, and that really put into context how we've arrived at this moment of such, such great potential for data. And finally, we want you as data leaders to understand that almost regardless of your title, You're now in a position to significantly influence the direction of your organization like never before. And hopefully, this is why you've decided to join us today to better equip yourself with、uh, knowledge and to grow as a data leader in your organization to connect further with the data community. So,、uh, let's get into the heart of the presentation. I'm going to highlight three key trends that we believe are contributing. Uh, to this change that we're seeing, and also to the success of Looker. And these are trends that we believe that every data professional should be aware of to maximize their potential. Now, the first trend is that everyone needs data, everyone at an organization can benefit from it.、Uh, and why is that? Well, let's take a look at this stat from an IDC research paper. It shows that the world's Uh, data is expected to reach 175 zettabytes by the year 2025. And just to put that figure in perspective, if each gigabyte in a zettabyte were a brick, we could build the Great Wall of China 258 times. Now that's a massive explosion of data, but what exactly is driving this growth? And what's driving this demand for data? Well, what's driving the demand is that the data hungry workforce has finally arrived. Now, think about it. Today, there are all these job titles that didn't even exist 10 years ago. And, and these are jobs whose entire purpose is to work with、uh, and deliver data across an organization. And, and there are so many roles that simply can't function without data. You have quantitative marketers and DevOps engineers or data driven product managers. 10 years ago, you still needed to convince executives of how much data is important and how transformative it can be. But the demand for data is now such that it's created all these job titles around data. So today, digital marketers can more effectively manage their spend、uh, using automated bots that increase or decrease bids on online ads based on the performance of those ads. Or product managers can better understand、uh, the usage of,、uh, of their product. To know where they need to invest time in 
and in development and opportunities for expansion. Now, despite this growing demand for data across organizations, we still find that uh, about 66% of companies are still using spreadsheets for the majority of their analytics. So we have to ask ourselves, is this really the best way to reach people within an organization with data? The market has answered this question and that's what leads us to trend number two. Trend number two is that SaaS business and consumer applications are absolutely exploding. And it's contributing to this massive growth in data volumes, but it's also creating a new way to reach people with data. Think about it. How many SaaS applications have you used today? Just doing a quick count in my head. I started my day in Gmail and Google Calendar. I used Google Chat to message my team. Uh, I reviewed my presentation and the notes for this presentation in Google Docs and Google Slides. Uh, I've used uh, applications to look at our customer CRM data and our marketing funnel. Uh, at, at the end of the day, I will probably have used more than 20 SaaS applications. And each of these applications is generating data. It's crunching data. It's feeding me data. For context, the Looker team uses more than 40 SaaS applications to run the business. And the average enterprise uses more than 1,000 SaaS applications. And that number is growing every year. Now, all these applications are really data-powered products. It's a user experience that was built on top of rows of data. Their goal really is to reduce user friction and uh, when accessing data and when accessing insights and make the whole experience with data a lot better, a lot user friendlier. So a couple of examples. Um, if you're a digital marketer, your job is probably enhanced by using a solution like Google Ads uh, or uh, Salesforce, for example, is an enormously popular CRM system. Now, these products are trying to make data more accessible to help people in an organization get their job done better and faster. But it does come with challenges because these products are often useful for one specialized use case. So for example, you wouldn't use a tool like Zendesk to analyze advertising performance in the same way that you wouldn't use Salesforce to manage your help desk tickets. So the idea is that these applications are very powerful, but they're also very isolated. You have to hop from application to application to do your job. And this means that you really miss the insights and the opportunities that are only uncovered when you connect the data and when you can see the complete picture. Now, when every department gets specialized SaaS applications, it means that islands of departmental data start appearing all across the organization. So the sales team will use one set of applications. The marketing team will use another set of applications. The product team will use yet another one. And the problem here is that each department has its own island or silo of data. and They're all dis disconnected from each other. And they all could potentially have a different understanding of that critical business metric or that critical KPI that should really be shared across an organization. Now, as data professionals, we know that this is a big problem because the fundamental value of business intelligence and a fundamental belief that we all share is that connecting data makes it infinitely more valuable. And also that with connected data, we get a better understanding and a more comprehensive view of how a business operates. Now, this problem is only going to get tougher to solve. According to IDC, within the next three years, 500 million new business apps will be created. So if we think it's hard to organize data now, well, this problem is only going to get worse and it's going to get worse faster. So the question is, what can we do? So something has to change. According to Forrester, over 80% of structured data isn't analyzed. And this is very unfortunate because it means that over time, we're really losing valuable insights and we're losing the opportunity to benefit from connected, connected data. But fortunately, there is hope. And that hope is trend number three. Data infrastructure is rapidly evolving. Data engineering technologies have really evolved dramatically in the last few years, and they have really raised the level of analytics and insights that are achievable. 
Uh, there are three pillars that are associated with this change. The first pillar is modern cloud databases, databases like BigQuery and Snowflake and some of the AWS offerings. These are bigger, faster, cheaper databases where you can store massive amounts of data and you can query it at a lower cost. And you also, you can do it at a much higher level of performance. But these databases are also getting smarter. You're seeing things like augmented analytics, machine learning, and other technologies that automatically generate insights and are injected or integrated directly into the database. Second, you have, once you have your data stored in a modern cloud database, you can take a more modern approach to integrating and preparing and managing that data. And this modern approach doesn't really depend on physical data extracts like in the past and can transform data on the fly. This approach, it's called ELT. And ELT makes the management of the data ecosystem a lot simpler, a lot more flexible, and a lot more agile. So what you're going to find with this approach is that you'll need fewer data extracts. For example, you'll be able to access data in real time. Uh, you'll be able to access complete row level data and updates will be simpler and faster. But here's the key. What enables this new ELT approach to data engineering is the growing importance of modeled data. And what does that mean? It means it's the ability to use a semantic model to describe all of your company's data to define all your business logic. Now with Looker, you use a technology called LookML for your semantic modeling. And what's great about LookML is that it's a highly collaborative technology that allows tens or even hundreds of data engineers to work together on the same semantic model. Now what this does is it enables data teams as opposed to like lone people working on data or shadow IT. So all of these developments are making this a really exciting time to work in this industry. These, these data engineering advances are changing our world and our lives as data professionals, and they're really bringing more data to the cloud, and that's making it faster and easier to deploy different types of analytics. And also, they will allow your workforce of data engineers to work collaboratively and at scale. Now, let me share a glimpse of how quickly these uh, cloud technologies are being adopted. Now, what you see here is a view across Looker's customer base that shows the growth of different database technologies. So you can see some of the classic database technologies on here like Postgres and MySQL. But then you look at the modern data platforms like BigQuery and Snowflake and their growth really is remarkable. So if part of your motivation for attending this session is that your company is considering making an investment, in one of these cloud databases, now really is the time to make that transition. According to Gartner, within the next three years, 75% of all databases in existence will be cloud hosted. And one of the main reasons for the, this phenomenal growth that we're seeing with cloud is the ability to leverage and manage data at today's scale. So with those three trends in mind, Let's wrap up this section with a description of what we think success with data looks like. The first is that data needs to be complete and data needs to be trustworthy. There needs to be confidence in the data. People need to uh, trust the insights that your data platform is delivering. We talk to companies all the time uh, where employees don't trust the data because there's no consistent business logic across the thousands of workbooks that are being used by their employees every day. And what ends up happening is uh, people end up having disagreements over what the data means instead of having productive conversations about the data. In order to restore that trust, they need a centralized semantic layer, like Looker's LookML model. And this semantic layer allows everyone to work with the same definition of key business logic. Second, data should be near real time. And that's what modern cloud databases allow us to do. They make near real-time insights a reality. Just think of how valuable this is, for example, for retailers. If they can optimize the digital advertising spent in real time during the holiday shopping season. And third, data should not just have an analytical purpose, it should have an operational purpose as well. This means that your insights should have the potential to trigger actions. Why? 
Modern businesses don't just want to understand data. They want to use it to get something done, to take some kind of action. This means that we finally have to go beyond reports and dashboards. Data should really feed other systems and machines that help people get real work done and drive the business forward. So let's take a look at a few examples of how this might work. The first example is a company called SalesLoft. SalesLoft is a prospecting and customer engagement platform that are based in the East Coast of the United States. Their customer success team monitors customer health scores and uh, they look at product usage and uh, they also are alerted when there are potential problems with these customers. Now, unfortunately, this information has to be manually looked up and manually put together and manually monitored in order to catch low customer health scores before risking a customer churning. But now they've replaced this manual system with an automated system they built using Looker. So what they did is that they combined Looker with SalesLoft so that when a customer health score drops below an established benchmark, an alert automatically notifies the success, the success managers and then automatically triggers emails within the SalesLoft platform to start re-engaging with that customer. Now this is massively valuable and it, it increases the relevance and the impact of their customer communications and ultimately what it does is that it creates a better customer experience. Now notice how this use case isn't about showing numbers on a graph or on a dashboard, but it's still an immensely valuable data-driven application. And how valuable? Well, this application that they built preserved $1.2 million in ARR in the first four months alone. Another example is Car Next Door. Now, Car Next Door is a car sharing company in Australia. The Car Next Door team was already getting a lot of value from the Looker product across a number of different functions. They were um, optimizing marketing, they were uh, delivering faster support, they were doing more efficient product development. But then they used Looker in a way that was pretty unexpected. So what happened was that last year there was a severe hailstorm in parts of Australia uh, and it caused damage to many of uh, Car Next Door's vehicles. Now, this resulted in very high repair costs, uh, losses from damaged vehicles that they had to take out of service, and uh, of course, it revealed potential new risks. So, in order to reduce future downtime and future losses, and to be able to continue delivering excellent customer service, what the Car Next Door team was to quickly uh, did was to quickly develop an application using Looker to help them prepare for future weather events. So using Looker's geospatial capabilities, uh, they can identify cars that are in locations that are associated with severe weather events. And in combination with other technologies like Segment and Braze, they can send alerts to drivers to help them get to safety. So this is really another example of using data in a way that does not involve displaying it on a dashboard, but really helps car next door identify at-risk cars and at-risk drivers, and it improves the reliability of their service and the customer experience. And all of this is powered by Looker. Now, finally, an example that anybody in sales will relate to, Slack. Slack has a product called Midas Touch. And the problem that it solves is that Slack's sales reps spend many hours each week creating presentations for their customers. And they were building these presentations by copying and pasting content manually from their old BI tool into Google Slides. Now, as you can imagine, this work is very repetitive, it's very error prone, and it's a perfect candidate for automation. So at its core, they envisioned this Midas Touch tool as an integration between Slack, Salesforce, Looker, and Google Slides. And what the Midas Touch application does is it allows sales reps to search for customers in Salesforce and then by the push of a button, request a set of pre-populated custom slides with data that is pulled from Looker all without having to leave the Slack application. So this means that a sales rep can generate a personalized report for every customer with a single command. And of course, it makes them look like heroes in every meeting that they go to. Now, 
this is a really interesting example because it's such a great story about how data from multiple different departments can be brought together in order to just massively improve the customer experience. Now these customer examples show how the three trends that we reviewed are all really converging to create many great opportunities for companies to build different kinds of data experiences and for data leaders to really influence the direction of their companies. So you might be asking yourselves, who exactly is a data leader? Well, data leaders have a lot of different titles. You can be a chief data officer, you can be a head of analytics, a vice president of business intelligence, a data analyst, a data engineer. But they can also be people that don't necessarily have uh, titles like data or analytics. It could be a, uh, a line of business leader, uh, but really anyone that can sh help shape the data strategy for their organization. Now, the idea is that no matter your title, uh, these are the people that are really tasked with creating a data culture. And that means incorporating data into our personal and work lives as never before. So in modern businesses, like the examples that I just shared, these people are really the ones who are leading companies and its employees into the future. What that means is that today, data leadership equals business leadership. Now, the key to this is to find new use cases for, use cases for data, uh, use cases that fall outside our conventional understanding of business intelligence. What you see here on your screen is a quote from Forrester that talks about how leading companies are thinking about data and how they're using it to create differentiating experiences, products, and services that drive growth. Experiences, products, and service, services. It's really interesting. And what I find fascinating about this quote is that it talks about the value that data can provide, but nowhere does it use words like analytics or reports or dashboards. And why? Well, because the idea is that data is no longer used as something to exclusively display on a report, something used exclusively for the purpose of analyzing it on charts or graphs. Data is now something that can be infused into everyday business processes. It can be used to build products to bring to market and can be used to make people smarter, to optimize your operations, to create new revenue streams. And what we're really doing here is we're talking about expanding the idea of traditional BI and bringing it into the modern era, the era of data-driven experiences. Now, what can you do as a data leader to initiate this change within your organization? Well, first, think of modern data technologies. Think of what technologies comprise your stack today and ask yourself, do employees trust the insights that you're delivering and are they near real time? And the importance of this is because understanding the data technology landscape, of course, is fundamental for data leaders, but not just to maintain technical parity, but also to be able to innovate and deliver cutting edge solutions to, uh, to your business. Now, if you're a younger organization, there's a good chance that you're already digital, you're already cloud native, but if you're part of a more established business uh, that maybe you're slower to adapt new technologies, you, you will need to start this digital transformation somewhere. And where do you start? Well, choose a department, choose a team, choose a particular project to start getting the technologies and people in place. The key thing really is to find the right use case and go after it. Second, imagine new experiences with data. Data is no longer meant as something just to be analyzed. You want to use data to lower barriers for your users, to fuel operational workflows, to deliver superior experiences for your customers and for your employees. The founder of Looker, uh, Lloyd Tab, has this very powerful guiding principle that says, great software is an act of empathy. And in this context, it means meeting your workforce and your customers where they work today, bringing trustworthy data into the tools that they already use and they already trust. And finally, consider a new role for you. Data leaders really have the opportunity to influence the direction of their organizations in really significant ways. Every part of an organization that's going through a digital transformation is fueled by data in some way. 
and data professionals who are capable not just of solving technology problems, but also solving business problems, using data to create new products and new value streams have become immensely valuable. And we see this ourselves. We see this within Looker's uh, own customer base all the time. We see data leaders that are positioned to be business leaders, uh, the business leaders of our time. So what that means in a very lighthearted fashion is that the data nerds have won. Data has been infused into so many moments in our daily lives, at work, at home, and, and these data experiences are brought to us by data leaders. Yes, engineers and analysts, but also data savvy marketing people, sales people, product people, all of them can be considered data nerds. Now, as I mentioned, we see this with our own customers. So many examples of data savvy individuals who rapidly advance their careers because of the value that they created for their organization and for their customers. And these are folks who were data analysts just a few years ago, but have now become highly recruitable and are in key business leadership positions at other organizations. So to wrap up, I hope you recognize the enormous opportunity in front of you today, both for your company and for your own career. Remember that data is more valuable than ever and people who can lead with data are going to be in high demand. The ingredients for success are first, we're seeing more demand than ever for data from a hungry workforce and customer base. Second, more and more data is being generated by a growing number of SaaS business applications. And third, data infrastructure continues to evolve, creating new opportunities that were unimaginable not that long ago. So with that, I want to thank you for your time and attention. And I want to invite you to learn more about Looker and engage with our team so that we can discuss your data and analytics objectives. Thank you.